Welcome back to How to Be a Better DM, the official podcast of Monsters.Rent. I'm Justin Lewis. And I'm Tanner Wayland. And we are here to help you tell better stories for yourself and your players as you dungeon master sessions of D&D, Dungeons and Dragons. We'd like to give you some quick announcements. We actually have one before the show. And then after the show, if you want to stick around, we have some more announcements then as well. Uh, But first, let's talk about this. Tired of being alone? Are you tired of not having any of your players understand you? Are you tired of never truly belonging? Well, you're in luck. All you need to do is join the Guild. The Guild is a unique and exclusive experience that is only open to Dungeon Masters. It is a full community focused on helping ease your DMing burdens. Want to meet other DMs? Join the Guild. Want to discuss your homebrew ideas with people who would appreciate it instead of just telling your cat? Join the guild! Want to find a place where all your wildest dreams will come true? Join the guild! Go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free. Wait, that can't be right. Chuck, Chuck, can you check this again? Is this supposed to be... What? Oh, it's... They're serious? It's free? Oh. Okay, all right. Yes, go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free, even though they are crazy for giving this away for free. Common side effects may include burping, sneezing, laughing, breathing, hearing, listening, tasting, farting, critting, sarcasm, and in extreme cases, explosive diarrhea. Awesome. With that out of the way, we can get into today's show. Hello and welcome back, adventurer. Uh, We're excited to have you on another episode of How to Be a Better DM. Uh, to get started, I've got a warm-up for you, Justin. You ready? All right. Yeah. Let's do it. Perfect. Okay. Let's say that you have to make a character for an uninterested player, right? Like a friend of yours who isn't, uh, you know, he's doing it or she is doing it because, you know, they're, you know, they're willing to go along with it, but they're not all that excited. What kind of character would you make for that uninterested player? That is... Such a good question, and I actually have a specific friend in mind, uh, one that I've asked, hey, do you want to play D&D sometime? And he's like, honestly, man, that just seems like a long meeting. And uh, so definitely uh, have him in mind. Um, Now, with this, I would say you have to make it kind of to fit the player. So you do have to know the player a little bit, but going somewhat general, Mm -hmm. I would make a character that is somewhat simple, so... Not too many extra attacks, not too many spells. Uh, I would either go with a Warlock, which is a nice magic user. Uh, You still get to use the magic, but it's not as complicated as a Sorcerer, Cleric, Mm -hmm. Wizard. I think it would also be uh, very interesting to do a, a Celestial Warlock. So someone who should be really, really good, but has this pact. And I would probably make their character lust for power but kind of fight against that lust so it, you know same way someone who is pre- predisposed to be an alcoholic this person is predisposed to seek after power uh, yet they have this celestial angelic heritage uh, and I would probably in this in this world I would probably make it so they actually have uh, you know in certain cases <clears throat> in certain worlds celestials actually have kind of a connection to an angel that guides them and tells them what to do. You know, some people, you know, in our modern vernacular, you might call it like the Holy Spirit or the ghost or the Holy Ghost, if you're a Christian. Um, I would probably have them have something like this and and give their uh, benefactor a name. And so their benefactor and their patron are kind of always at odds trying to get them to do different things. Uh, You know, cue the scene with uh, Emperor's New Groove with Kronk and the Shoulder Angels. Uh, you mm-hmm. know that that would kind of be the the epitome. But again, I, I would try and make it simple, but also somewhat flashy. So they're like, "Wow, I can do cool things." Like when I level up, I can summon like a demon, which is nuts. Uh, but also, if mm-hmm. I want to, I can just shoot an eldritch ba- blast a couple times and be done with it. That's great. I love that. Especially, I like that uh, there was depth uh, to the role playing. Because if they're uninterested, it's probably because they just are picturing a bunch of nerds being like, mm-hmm. oh, hey, I roll to hit you with my mighty sword. <laughs> you know, in, instead, yeah. it's nice because you're like, hey, you got a little cronk, uh, like angel exactly. devil, like 
uh, shoulder angels, you know, kind of dealio. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I if like I could that. Add, I, th- I think one important thing about having those, the patron and the benefactor, um, is it allows me as the DM to kind of put in my two cents to the character, to the player, on some things that they should do or can do, so that way they're not solely responsible for all the choices that they have to make. Like, they don't have to think of everything. Instead, as a DM, I can somewhat whisper, hey, this person needs help, or hey, you should steal that person's knife or something like that. And, and I'm interested to think, like, I would maybe make it so the voices for the benefactor and the patron are basically, und- like, you can't distinguish between them. So you don't always know whether you're following, you know, the, the Satan or the, the angel or the de- the devil, if that makes sense. Yeah, I like that too, because it kind of keeps them on their toes, uh, which is another way to keep people interested, right? Suspense uh, or, you know, indecision. Both of those are great ways to uh, do it versus someone who's just watching all the other players kind of do their, do their thing, right? Um, yeah, great. Love that. Good warm up. I think you crushed it. Um, okay, so today uh, we're actually going to be talking a lot about not uninterested players, but beginner players who oftentimes can be uninterested. Uh, but first, we're going to get into some announcements. Um, oh, so first off, uh, to introduce myself, <laughs> it's been a sec. Uh, I'm Tanner Wayland. And, uh, and I'm here with my compatriot, my friend, Justin Lewis. He, he, Hi there. He, he waved. You didn't see it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so today, uh, like always, we're going to be learning about how to craft better stories uh, for yourself and your players as you dis- DM sessions of Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Uh, so as you all know, D&D is very popular nowadays. Uh, Stranger Things obviously kind of led to a resurgence. And then, of course, people even before then were starting to get into it more because being a being a nerd wasn't wasn't a bad thing. Uh, But because of that, we're going to have a lot of new players. Um, And that's why we felt like today's topic was so uh, important. Um, But as as a couple housekeeping items uh, before we get into that, so first off, we've got our one shot coming up. Uh, it's Saturday, September 17th, uh, 2 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, we're going to be sending out an email. We actually have all five players signed up already. Uh, so uh, for those who uh, were late or didn't make it, uh, we definitely will have you on the list for the next one. Uh, we're actually hoping to collaborate with some uh, some wonderful people that we've done uh, podcast with some of the guests we've had uh, so we're going to keep that a secret though who but we have some uh, we have some <laughs> fun plans um, but yeah so we're going to be sending out a calendar invite to each of those five players uh, make sure the date's all set and then also send them all the other info they need uh, next we just want to give a shout out to uh, one of our uh, to a listener uh, Robrick Van Helm He's awesome. Rob is great. Uh, he's actually uh, kind of sh- uh, shown us this encounter that he wrote, uh, designed like professionally. It's called the League of Libraries, uh, the Lorecroft Collection. Uh, now, if any of you are kind of getting into uh, D&D, or if you're, you know what, sometimes I get a little tired or burnt out of making one-shots. You know, and if you're kind of in that place where you just want to see what other people have made, Rob's he he knocked it out of the park, uh, so we actually are going to have the uh, the link in the show notes uh, so that you can get go there. But if you don't look at that, it's at uh, betterdungeonmaster dot com forward slash robrick r o b r i c. Go there, purchase it. All the proceeds go to Rob, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, but uh, well, first off, anything else? Uh, anything else, Justin? Um, no, um, again, Rob is awesome. Uh, he makes awesome stuff on, uh, D- uh Dungeon Master or DMGuild.com. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, for one, am super excited to see the one shot in September. And for those of you who are interested, uh, we will be coming out probably with a link for you to actually watch the one shot. Just, uh, just in case you didn't get a chance to sign up, 
uh, you'll be able to watch it uh, and kind of participate that way. So keep an eye out for that. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's get on to the meat, the tasty meat of the conversation, <laughs> which is DM tips uh, for beginners. Um, now, uh, Justin, uh, why don't you start us out? Yes. Sure. Uh, so first thing I want to say is these tips are for both new players and new DMs helping new players. Uh, and so the first one I would say is talk with your players slash DM. Uh, if you're a new player, if you're a new DM, you need to open up those halls of communication. Uh, and you need, as the DM, the new DM, you need to ask your players lots and lots of questions uh, specifically about what they would add to your game or what really hasn't worked for them as well, uh, you know, and, and help them understand that they can freely talk to you and ask you questions as well. You know, if you need player, if, if you need info about a player's backstory, ask them immediately, hopefully in some sort of private setting so you don't tip off other players. But uh, if you want your players also uh, offering you info about their backstory, tell them that nothing would make you happier. Help them understand that, they need to be talking to you as much as they can or want. Uh, and, and it's kind of ironic, actually, for such a, you know, quote-unquote nerdy game. The game teaches a lot about relationships. You know, in order to have a successful campaign, you absolutely need constant and consistent communication from all parties involved. If, you know, if nothing else, you need that just to even keep the game scheduled, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that uh, I, the great thing about D&D, as always, is it's, it's you essentially playing together with your friends you know and talking is like so central to that that's what's great about it as opposed mm -hmm. to a lot of video games board games i mean a lot of those you can do that as well but you literally can't do D, &D without it uh and so you know if mm -hmm. you're a new uh, dm new player just embrace that just be like hey you know, those conversations that we like having, we're going to have a lot of conversations and it's going to be about, you know, about the game. It's going to be about other stuff. Uh, you just need to really embrace that and, and kind of uh, to uh, to the point that, you know, some people uh, might not, you know, they might be introverts, uh, but, you know, you can help them feel like it's a safe space uh, for them to, mm -hmm. you know, talk in by by including them, by seeing what their opinion is, you know, not talking over them. But, it, like, especially if they're a new player, you know, make sure that if they start talking, you listen and you treat it, uh, treat it, what am I trying to say? Uh, treat it respectfully, treat them like an equal. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're, you're completely right. Like, uh, and I don't have kids, but I'd imagine it's just like with kids. If, you know, your, your kids, when they're younger, they come to you and they show you these things that are super important to them but you don't really care when they're older and they have important things. Are they going to come to you? Not really. It's the same thing with being a dungeon master. If you don't, you know, take even the, 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 the minorist question seriously, especially if someone's new, then when they have bigger questions, they're not really going to, you know, feel comfortable asking. Yeah, them. totally. Uh, so, so a tip that I'd like to talk about, uh, and this one honestly is more directed to players specifically like new players it's, it's, you know, mm -hmm. as a new player, it's going to be easy to arrive at a session and feel like you're kind of just tag, tagging along, you know, like, oh, everybody else, especially the DM, has their ish together and they're, you know, they know how to play the game. They've got these character backstories th that they're super invested in. And you're going to feel maybe like you're just uh, like a ride along sidekick. I instead, mm -hmm. learn how to take ownership. And now, what does that look like? I find that ownership means a few things. One, you're going to get some material. Now, I'm not saying that you have to shell out the money and buy all the books, but maybe you buy one. Or maybe you go online and mm -hmm. read through the website. Uh, for example, maybe like for your class, for your first character, you're going to be studying every week just a little bit about that character and some of the lore and maybe some of the abilities that they can do, right? Because uh, if you wait for just during the session, you're gonna feel a little bit out of uh, out, out of your depth, uh, and, and that's not what we want, you know, players feeling. Because because it should be a fun environment first, and one of the ways you can have real fun is taking that uh, taking that step and just being like, you know what, 
I did my studying on my own. I learned about the background of the campaign, uh, or I solidified some of the background of my character so I can play them better, right? Whatever it is, if you take ownership and you're like learning about it, uh, even in your off time, so to say, so to speak, then you're going to feel uh, more part of the game, you know? I agree, and I think that is a really good point because, you know, for some of these new players, you know, sitting at a table with experienced quote-unquote nerdy players can maybe feel intimidating when they have these tricked out characters with deep backstories you know you don't feel like you belong um as as a dungeon master it's your it's your opportunity to help a player and say hey maybe you don't feel like you belong because you haven't read these things or you haven't thought about your character's backstory and we can do that together Uh, and actually you, you know going on that note I would say my second tip is in those conversations when maybe your player is having those doubts or something, try and help them unlimit themselves. You know, sometimes new players might look to the DM and think or say, what is it they want me to do here? And if that is how you play as a DM, I suggest you, you know, you rethink your style. In fact, I know my wife has literally said that to me in the recent past during our game. And I took that as a personal failure because, you know, at no point do I want her thinking that, I am the game. Instead, I'm kind of just the arbiter of the game, making it so they are the game, you know? And, and you want your players to think outside the box and treat the scenarios as real-world scenarios, in my opinion, where there are infinite options. You know, they don't always have to fight the, the, the monster. They can find another way out. And, and the mechanics of the game are, in my opinion, they're just to be that mechanics, processes that explain how consequences come about. And, you know, it's a fine line, but if they want to try something, they can. And it's my job as a DM to just think about how logically difficult or perhaps impossible that thing is and then let them try anyways, you know. So tell your players to let themselves imagine grand things and then try them out and kind of process of eliminate or process of uh, failure, success, learn how to do things in d and I guess. Yeah, and we've even talked about this before, right, uh, where we talked about making failure... Uh, you know, not such a hard wall that players just are like, oh, great. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the DM doesn't want me to do that. You know, instead, it's like, hey, (laughs) let the player truly uh, live, so to speak, and and do whatever they want to. Um, If it's something that's a little, you know, a little tasteless, a little bit, uh, you know, they're dreaming, so uh, then it's like, hey, let them have consequences or let them succeed, and it's suddenly the game gets turned on its head, and that's fun, too. Right, uh, like if they succeed according to the rules, and then other times if they fail according to the mechanics and the rules, you can you can kind of soften that failure. You can be like, hey, obviously you were kind of bored, Mister Player, with like how the story was going. Uh, therefore, I'm going to take this failure, and I'm not just going to be like, hey, get back on track. Instead, I'm going to be like, you know what? Let's change things mm-hmm. up a little bit. Your failure has led to a different avenue or a path that you can go um, different from what you thought and different from what I thought, but hopefully interesting. Right. Agreed. Agreed. You know, I think we talk a lot about in D and D about like DMing almost feels more like reacting, you know, uh, mm-hmm. to another player's choice. And it is, but I think that many times the best, uh, the best content, the best moments happen when there's collaboration so this applies to whether you're a DM or a player. If you're a player, you can really collaborate in so many things, right? Even though you're not creating the world around you, you can collaborate in your player's backstory. Uh, you can be like, hey, other player, friend of mine, uh, how about we, you know, our players, our characters are related in a certain way, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in between sessions, you could even talk and be like, hey, I think it'd be super funny or cool if both of our people were like, do, like shooting for this, you know. Yeah. Um, on on the other hand, you can also collaborate with the DM for wonderful results, right? That's how most the, uh, like most players whose p- player backstories get interwoven into a, uh, into a story, in an effective way. It's because they're talking with the DM outside of it. They're being like, "Hey, I wrote this scene, this uh, flashback, this." Uh, this montage for what I want my player to go through in order to explain this 
mechanical change that's happening or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And if they do that, then I think the other players get a kick out of it. You get a kick out of it as a DM or a player because you've put in the uh, the work. You know, you've taken time to not just do it off the cuff, but to actually prepare it. And I think it just makes for a more rich uh, story in general. Yeah. And I actually have two examples of this. So, uh, it, it, you know, in, in the last few weeks, uh, examples of DM, me as the DM, kind of reaching out for collaboration with the player, and then me as the DM asking the player for some collaboration. So, uh, long story short, in one of my sessions, three of our, our characters were petrified, right? <laughs> Uh, which is kind of nuts, but mm-hmm. uh, one of those was a a uh, a female named Rue who has been looking for her long lost brother, uh, and she's kind of a shadyish character, you know. And uh, she was one of the petrified characters. And w- when the player was like, you know, I need to make my new character, I was like, hey, I have a suggestion if you're up for it. And she's like, shoot. And I said, how about you play your your old other character's long lost brother? who's actually been searching for her. And then the other two characters are also part of your kind of criminal crew, as it were. And you, you know, you kind of encounter each other and, and you're, you're also shady. And, uh, my, my mm. wife, who actually is the player, she, she really enjoyed that. And after she played it, she's like, wow, it's really interesting playing a different character because I was Rue for so long. Now I'm Ransom and I'm having to like play differently. And that was just one example where I made a suggestion and then she ran with it. Uh, kind of on the flip side, <clears throat> in the last session we had, one of our characters, he's, he, his name is Jory, uh, he's a paladin dragonborn, and he was actually found in the Underdark, and then brought with the, the, the companions to the surface and so forth, and he had lost his other adventuring companions, and for the first time in the, in the campaign, he sent a sending, you know, he, he messaged one of them, and he's like, mm-hmm. I would like to message my old party. And me as the DM, I was like, oh, crap, I don't know what to do here. So I said, okay, what is the name of the person you are reaching out to? And he said, Ramira. And I was like, that's something I've never heard. So I said, what do you say? And then he said, uh, you know, he said his message of like, hey, I haven't thought about you guys. I wonder where you were. And then I responded and I said, wow, it's been so long. Uh, and then we kind of collaborated a little bit more because he was like, how is everyone? And I was like, well, what are the names of all the people that were in the group? And he gave that to me. And then I, I gave him a little tidbit saying, hey, they're actually stuck in the Astral Sea. Uh, and it was kind of this really cool moment of this character because uh, this character was essentially a replacement for another character that died. And we mm-hmm. haven't had a chance to build the backstory for it. Uh, but in you know a small moment, we have essentially without even needing to built a backstory for this character because he's lost his memory, but now he knows oh, yeah. that his old friends are in trouble. And so that's just kind of another plot hook that we can pursue. And it was, you know, player DM collaboration. He provided the details. I just said, this is, you know, the, the problem they're in. And now it's percolating in his mind. So just a couple of examples of uh, DM player collaboration. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, I especially like how, you know, it, you as a DM, it, uh, like, it, collaboration isn't always like, hey, let's both sit down and come up with an idea. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of times it's one of you pitching an idea and the other one yes anding them, right? Exactly. Um, and then taking it and not like letting them be like, not letting them have to do everything on their own, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so if someone's like, Hey, I have this idea. It's not fully fleshed out. Then give them a leg up. Be like, Hey, I love where that's going. Here's my ideas on top of that. And you can do that in game. You can do that outside. Uh, either way, I think you're going to feel a lot of pressure off your back and have better story. If you do, uh, just kind of acknowledge and try to, um, make collaboration a much more active part of your uh, storytelling. Exactly, exactly. And and then the last tip I'm going to give before we go to a quick break uh, is, as a DM, encourage your players and tell them that they're going to get what they're, sorry, they're going to get out what they put in. And uh, this is kind of from the movies, as it were. Uh, and we don't realize this, but when we watch movies, we essentially give the screen or, or the, the, the story permission to bring us into the world. We, we, we volunteer ourselves and you can tell 
when it's a bad movie, you don't actually give that volunteering. You don't you don't give that permission to kind of steal you away, uh, and and you you reserve yourself in the real world, as it were. Uh, but as a DM, you know this. You know that the more you put in, the more you're going to get out. So to your players, try and encourage them and say, I know it's going to feel awkward. I know you're going to feel weird and silly, and you're going to look around, and you're not going to think. Uh, everyone else is doing the same thing. You're going to think, wow, everyone's looking at me being all weird. But encourage your players and say the more you give permission to the game to embrace you and pull you in, the more fun you're going to have. Uh, and and honestly, that's one of the biggest tips I could say for you to pass along to your new players. Okay, perfect. Uh, so before we continue uh, and get to the end of this topic that we're discussing, uh, I've got a continuation of the warm-up that we had before you ready justin yes okay perfect uh so i really loved the idea of uh of the celestial warlock that you created for this player for this uninterested player um and especially with the kind of shoulder angel uh vibe going on (laughs) uh okay so as a continuation of that what would you what would be one uh what is it uh conundrum a uh, difficult choice mm. that you would pose for that player that you think would be very interesting for them. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, I, I would probably name the character Cia Lois. Uh, and in this instance, Cia Lois would probably be, um, let's see. Uh, it would probably be someone of power, is in trouble, uh, someone who Cialois can actually take advantage of, or like their death would benefit Cialois. So maybe it's a uh, <clears throat> uh, we'll say it's a constable or something that has evidence that Cialois did something wrong, and they are in trouble. They are, you know, classic example would be like hanging from a ledge, and they are there. And they have the, the the voices in their heads saying, "Let them fall and die, and you're you're scot free, uh, or save them and and tr- show that you are better than this." Uh, and I think that would be a really interesting thing because I think uh, if the player has understood the character, then it, it should make them think about what does this character actually want, and you know, what they choose will I think be really telling about what the player is hoping to get from the character experience. So if they let the person fall, then they're probably going to go for, you know, more power and and uh, it'll be a lot easier to tempt them with such things and, and the voice of the benefactor will get less and less. But on the, on the flip side, the patron might have some issue with that and they might get some of their powers taken away and there are going to be consequences in that regard, you know? Okay, follow up because I had a thought. So I think it would yes. be very tempting for certain DMs to... You know, let's say that they, they that C. Lois lets this constable with the evidence fall, and now C. Mm-hmm. Lois actually has a real chance to increase their power. Would you yes. penalize the uh, the character immediately, or would you kind of let them ride high on their power for this moment, and then later on with a separate issue, kind of let them see the uh, the karma for their actions? Like, w- would you defer that or immediate? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's a good question. So, <clears throat> the like the story writer in, in, inside of me wants to actually make it so the constable doesn't actually die. So, like, they just get hurt really badly. They should have died, but it just wasn't far enough or, or whatever it was. And so I think it would probably be later that it comes back to bite them in the butt and essentially show them, like, hey, you thought you were on top. You actually should have just killed him rather than just letting him fall. Or you should have helped him because now he's come back and uh, he knows that it was you and, and so forth. Uh, the other option would be to have people see in that area uh, that, you know, they let them fall. And uh, I see, that's a really good question because I think, you know, there are, there are good ideas on both sides. Like, on the one, you could show that 
or, or you know, to make it even more interesting, they're trying to help him, and as they're trying to help him, he falls anyways, and people see, and and you know, it becomes like they get the worst of both sides, you know. Uh, th- there's all sorts of things you could do as a DM, and I think it really depends on what your goal is next with the character. I think the most interesting thing to do with this would be to allow them to have that kind of power and the freedom and then have it slowly kind of enclose in upon them as they realize, uh, I don't think he's dead, you know? Oh, yeah. That, that's, uh, I love that. And, I, and the reason I pitched it because I had the same, as you, were, uh, as you were introducing the scenario you were presenting, I had the same thought. I was like, mm-hmm. honestly, if you let him kind of ride high in his power for a while, and then let it kind of be a slow burn, uh, like yeah. thing that comes back to haunt him. Uh, that's great. Or if it is immediate and it's mm-hmm. like, oh my goodness, he thought he'd get all this power, but instead, like three townsfolk saw him and they're all running away, and he either has to kill yeah. them as well and kind of deepen his own hole, or he gets caught. You know, like right. I think that that's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, good good job. I think it would also be. I think it would also be interesting to kind of put him in the same situation again, but a long time down the road and see what he does again. You know, like, does he make the same decision or does he try the opposite? Uh, you know, maybe not exactly the same, but kind of the, like it should be visually similar. So it, it kind of calls to memory in the player's mind, like, oh, wait, I was here before. Should I let this person die you know and i think that would be really interesting to, to do as well but maybe a little bit more difficult yeah yeah i love that i think that it also allows uh, you as the dm to you know voicing the shoulder angel and devil uh to mm-hmm. to essentially like use similar lines and that would really help the player kind of like be like oh my goodness this is happening again right 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 yeah great love it um but anyway, thank you for you know that great warm up. Uh, let's continue to talking about uh, tip, tips for uh, players there, players and DMs that are new to D and D. How about let's have you start? Yeah. Uh, so the next tip I would say is one you need to relay to your new players, and this is one that specifically uh, it would be better to do in a private place. Um, and it's that you need to let them know that it's a new thing. d and a new thing that they're trying. And it's okay if they don't like it. It's okay if they want to stop. Uh, and they don't have to keep playing just to make you happy. In fact, what I think is you should go one step further and say, if this happens where you find yourself not interested in the game as much or just not having as much fun as you want, just come to me. I promise you I won't get mad. Pull me aside when no one else is around and just simply explain that, you know, you had some fun at D&D, but it's just not your vibe or, you know, your kids need your attention or you have different priorities or really anything else. Just just explain to them how you want that process to go about and say it's perfectly fine. And, and explain to them also that what's not okay is for players to constantly lead everyone else on and also force everyone to change their schedule because they don't have the spine to actually say no thank you. You know, D&D is not for everyone. We welcome everyone and we invite everyone However, who, who stays is entirely up to them. But I'll tell you this, though. Uh, we're going to have some amazing memories with whoever stays, uh, and we will harbor no ill will to anyone who doesn't. I'll yeah, just say that. Yeah, exactly. And, and this is actually such a huge piece of advice. Um, you know, for people like me, I kind of I enjoy having a lot of different experiences, especially with friends, and I will inconvenience myself because I'm like, oh, but I like this, you know? <laughs> Uh, despite the fact mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. honestly being without it would probably be a load off my, you know, weight off my shoulders. Um, and so sure. kind of getting ahead of that, like you said, and telling them like, Hey, if this happens, that's okay. Um, and, and for the DM in that situation, well, first off DMs, you can also do this. If you're getting burnt out, realize that you can be like, Hey guys, well, well, actually I have an example, a cousin of mine was finishing a game. I think I've shared this before, but uh, school was starting up again. He knew that it was going to get super busy in college. And so we got to this boss who all of us, we didn't know how long he had planned on doing this campaign. Uh, we got to this boss and we were like, oh, this, the rest of us were thinking internally, this must be the last boss. And we're fighting it. And then the <laughs> boss kills us all. 
and the and the <laughs> and my cousin was like, "Hey, so this is the last session I'm going to be DMing because all this other stuff." And it was just so funny because if we had had that kind of conversation, like you had said, uh, like being like, "Hey, it's okay mm-hmm. to end." He probably could have just let us win. And we were like, did you realize that we didn't know that you had this whole other stuff planned? You could have just had this giant tentacled, like, uh, sea monster god that you that wiped us out. We could have, you could have let us win, even if it was hard. <laughs> and mm-hmm. just that could have been the end of the campaign, you know? Uh, and he was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I just thought it was so funny because... Because he was like, oh, the only way to stop this is to kill them all. Because the idea of almost like ending the campaign <laughs> was like, oh, that's not on the table, apparently. You know, unless they all die and it's a TPK. Right. But, yeah, I just thought it was so funny. And so I think that having uh, steps or having that conversation about when to stop or how to let some player leave, it's so important. Especially because if you if it's only one player who wants to leave... I think there's some DMs out there, and you've probably met some, Justin, who would be who would kind of pressure the player and be like, honestly, without you, I don't know if we can keep going, you know? I, uh, and the fact yeah. is, I'm, I'm gonna say right now, like that you can find someone else, you know? It it, it is a little nerve wracking yeah. to reach out to other, you know, friends, spouses, uh, family members, and ask and be like, hey, I've got this game, want to come in? to some people you probably maybe don't know, you know, I think people are a lot more willing if you just ask, you know, we make it a huge issue when it doesn't need to be. So let people go if they want to go. And then, you know, realize that there's, you know, more fish in the sea for you to ask to come into your game. Right. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. But great, great advice. Love it. Uh, now for if you're on the opposite end and you're not the kind of person who's getting a little burnt out or thinks you might be uh, let's say that you're the kind of new player who's really just you know jiving you've uh, made a couple characters or maybe even just one you know uh, I think some players they have this barrier between them and being a DM where they're like oh I'm just not skilled enough or the the game that I would come up with just isn't, you know, it's not going to be cool enough. And I, I think that's hogwash, you know. It, it's just, mm-hmm. it's not true. You can, you can, any level of skill, you can try and be a DM, right? Uh, that's what this whole podcast is essentially yeah. about. Sometimes people have just been barely starting to play D&D. Sometimes they've been playing for years. You can always get better. And so if that's the case, then, you know, why not start playing early uh, as a DM and writing your own campaigns? Because it's like, hey, there's other people who probably have been playing a lot longer who aren't that much more skilled than you. Because, you know, (laughs) because it it all depends on how uh, how you develop yourself. So, yeah, that's that's kind of my my advice there is try DMing. You can do it. You can ask people for help. But if you want to do it don't put it off just because you think it's outside of your capabilities agreed and i just add that by trying dming it will make you a better player and it will make it more fun for everyone else at the table when you play and also your dms will love you more because you'll understand them and you'll appreciate what they do which is uh, as as a dungeon master it is important Uh, the last tip i would give to you dungeon masters to pass on to your players is encourage them to describe their own content. Uh, it's one of the ways that each person can make themselves feel cool. And if they struggle with it, tell them, no worries, I will fill in the blanks when you struggle. And I'll help you and prod you along so that way you can eventually create these awesome scenes of your character doing really awesome stuff. Uh, and, and in doing that, I would help them understand that it doesn't have to be, a, you know, you roll the dice and you hit once. It can be more narrative and say you trade blows left and right and eventually you slide their sword up just a little bit so that way you can nick their outer arm and draw a little bit of blood with two points of damage or something like that. But help them, you know, embellish on their own and this will actually save you some uh, time and energy and effort so that way you don't have to describe every person's combat 
Uh, and, and it is a fine line, and it does take to, it does take some fine tuning, but I think that definitely goes a long way to helping each person. As as Tanner, you always say, you know, the goal is to make each person at least once during the night feel awesome. And describing your own combat, I think, is a great way to yeah, start. Yeah, exactly. That road. And and I I honestly wouldn't stop even just with combat. I would say skill checks as well. Because I think that that's overlooked mm-hmm. um, because DMs are like, oh, like I have to tell them that they succeeded. And so I might as well just go the next step and be like, okay, mm-hmm. you unlock the door. But instead you could say, okay, <laughs> you passed it. Uh, you unlock the door. What does that look like? You know, and you could, and then they, that gives them a chance to be like, okay, I get down. I look around, put my, uh, you know, my, what are they? Lock picks uh, into the door. Um, I was going to say toothpicks. Yeah. I was like, that's yeah. not right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on who, you know, oh, it my depends goodness. on your character. New character <laughs> idea. Dentist turned thief. Um, no. But anyway, but I, I yeah. Uh, but <laughs> amazing. Love it. Uh, <laughs> but. Yeah, I just think that if you take any opportunity, and if you as a DM aren't very imaginative, here's the great news. Like like I just said right there, the way to kind of cue people in to give them the chance to explain is just to be like, okay, you hit. What does that look like? Um, Your spell was successful. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Okay, your skill check was successful. What does that look like? It's a very simple phrase. But it gives them all the leeway in the world to do uh, essentially whatever they want, right? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So there you have it. Those are some of our tips on, uh, well, some of our D&D tips for beginners, uh, both beginner players and beginner dungeon masters. Uh, thank you, Tanner, for being such a great host today. Oh, stop it. You're so nice. <laughs> yeah, you did great. Oh, thanks, Justin. And so, our dear players... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, honestly, we are very grateful uh, that you were listening today. Uh, we hope that if you're a new player, um, or even if you're an exp- experienced player or DM, um, that these tips have kind of refreshed uh, some of the simple ways that you can make your uh, your game better, your storytelling better. Um, as we mentioned before, if you want to reach out to us, um, obviously we're going to have our, uh, website and email in the show notes. Um, but in the meantime, we hope that you have a wonderful uh, time adventuring and everybody get ready and roll initiative. Thank you for listening to today's show. Uh, we really appreciate your support and your patronage. We have a few more announcements to go over. Uh, first, Did you ever fall in love with the library as a kid? It was a place where you could experience a thousand stories without having to buy a thousand books. That is what Monsters at Rent can do for your D&D campaign. You can rent and swap out as many quality miniature monsters and creatures for your D&D party as you could ever want without having to buy them. You can rescue villagers from a kobold camp or lead your party through the fighting forest or many more adventures. We're coming out with new bundles all the time. Just sign up for our subscription to get access to your own personal library of minis. Go to monsters.rent to find out more. That's the website, monsters, with an S, dot rent. Get your library pass to a world of minis today. We also wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Stardust and Dragons. I'm going to let one of the cast of Stardust and Dragons, Christian Hatcher, and his crew tell you a little bit more about it. This August, a new adventure podcast is coming to a platform near you, filled with action. You one of the two of them. We can't keep right. taking hits like that. Drama. Everything that she's been doing, everything she's going to do finally sets in and stardust help help (coughs) someone please find out more about this epic odyssey at stardustanddragons.com where adventure awaits in the stars that's all the announcements we have today again thank you so much for everything you do for us you make this show possible like we said before we'll be back next week with another great episode and until then 
let's go ahead and roll initiative. 